Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I am going to give you a brief introduction to text file input and output using Python. First, we'll start with a brief overview of text files and ViLIO in general. Then we'll move on to talking about reading text files, writing to a text file, and then appending uh, to text files. So what is a file? A file is a permanent way to store data. When your program finishes executing, if you want to keep any data that was being used by that program around for maybe use in the program at a later date, you need to store that data somewhere and you can store that data in a file. Okay, now within files, there is a position. For example, if you're going to read from a file that already exists, you open the file and by default, the read position is the very beginning of the file. You read a line from the file, the read position advances to the next line. You read that line from the file, then the read position advances to the next line and so forth, right? So this is an example of sequential access, which is what we will look at in this video. Okay, so what's the basic process? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open a file, we're gonna process the file and then close it. And by process, I mean, we will either read some data from the file or we will write some data to the file. Okay, so let's talk about reading data from a text file. This is gonna require that we use the open function. The open function is a value returning function and we will assign the value returned by the open function to some variable. That variable will serve as our connection to the file. The open function is going to require two arguments, the name of the file and uh, R, which stands for reading. By default, the program is going to search for the file we want to read from in the same directory as the program source file itself. To read from the file, we will use the read line method. The read line method will read one line from the file at a time. The data that is read will be read in as type string and will be returned by the read line method. We can then assign that to a variable. Once we're finished, we'll go ahead and use the close function to close the file. Let's look at an example. For this example, I've created a simple text file called data.txt. And data.txt has got just three pieces of data in it. Line one, the word hello. Line two, integer 10. Line three, 8.6. Now remember, when we read in from this file, the values that are read in each one of these lines is going to be stored as a string. Okay, so I've created a Python source file named files.py in the same location as my text file. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to open the file for reading using the open function. Then I will read each line from the file using the read line method. Right? And then once I finish that, I'll close the file when I'm done. Okay, so how do I open the file? Right, well, I'm going to need a variable, which I'll just call A. And then I need to assign to that variable the results of the open function. Now the open function is a built-in function and it's gonna take two arguments. First argument is gonna be the name of the file itself. And in this case, it's data.txt, okay? And I'm gonna to have to specify the mode that I'm opening the file in. And in this case, I wanna open it for reading, so we're gonna have R, okay? Now, once I've done that, then I can read each line from the file using the read line method. So a dot read line. OK, 
Okay, and what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to assign the value return from read line to a variable uh, named um, input. Okay, well, sorry, I can't use that. It's reserved. It's our. It's a built-in function. Uh, I'll just call it. Um, Oh, data in, how about that? Okay, data in. Okay, and then once I've read that line, I'll go ahead and print it. Okay, so once I've done that, I'll go ahead and close the file by calling the close method. Okay, now let's just test it, what we have so far. Okay, and you can see over on the left side in the shell, there's the hello, the first word from the file the first line from the file. Okay, now let's just repeat this three more times. Okay, because we had three pieces of data, right, in that file. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. You can see there's hello, there's 10, and then there's 8.6. Okay, all right. Now, this worked great because I knew ahead of time exactly how many lines of data were in that file, right? So let me revise this, okay? Let me show you another version where I could um, write the program and read all the data in the file, no matter how many lines there were, right? So without knowing ahead of time how many lines there are, I'm going to read each line in, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first read a line, okay, and put that in some variable, which I'll call, um, yeah, you know, in data, I guess, okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a while loop, right? And if the file is empty, then read line will return an empty string, right? So what I'll do is I'll just test for that empty string. So while in data, does not equal empty string. That's just two single quotes next to each other. What am I gonna do? I'll go ahead and print what was read, okay? And then I'll get the next line, okay? So when we've reached the end of the file, when we've read all the lines, that last read here, read line's gonna return empty string, and that will be our signal to break out of the loop. Okay, so let's try this again. Okay, we can see hello 10 at 8.6. Okay, so there's just one more thing that I want to show you, right? So you may have noticed that when I ran this program, I ended up with uh, an extra line in between uh, each of the pieces of data that I printed out, right? Why is that? Well, the print function by default displays an extra new line character, which means that it moves cursor at the beginning of the next line. Uh, the read line function, or the read line method here, that thing reads the entire line from the file, including the new line character at the end of each line. And so when we print that out, we're actually printing two new line characters, one for the line from the text file, and then one from the print function. Right, so what we can do is, is we can use this method, right, use the rstrip method to get rid of that extra new line, right? So this is how we're gonna do it, right? So in data has got a string in it with a new line character at the end. So what we'll do is we will call the rstrip method and we'll say, hey, um, R strip stands for rightmost strip, right? So what it's going to do is start removing characters from the right end of the uh, string. Uh, and we can specify as a parentheses well, what characters we want to remove, right? So we're going to remove the first instance of the new line character, okay? And uh, we'll do that again inside the loop itself. And so now in data is we're going to read it in, right? In data is going to have right here it's going to have hello backslash in, right, from the text file. Then after we strip that new line character off, it'll have just hello. So that way when we print it, 
we'll just see hello on the screen, move to the, the beginning of the next line, we'll grab our next line, do the stripping again, lather, rinse, repeat. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. And you can see the output right there. All three lines right after each other. Uh, no space in between. Okay, so let's talk about writing to a text file. All right, so we're going to use the open function once again. And the open function is going to need two arguments. It's going to need the file name of the file we want to write to. And it's going to need the W argument, which stands for writing. If there's already a file that exists with the name that we specified, then that file is going to get replaced. So that means all that data that was in the already existing file, gone. Okay, so to write to our new file, we're going to use the write method. And of course, we're going to close when we're finished. Okay, so if that file doesn't exist, then when we open it for writing, uh, it will be created for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. So we're going to use the uh, open function, just like we did before. We're going to need a variable, and we're going to need to call that open function. And we'll need to specify the name that we want to the name of the file that we want to write to, so I'll call this uh, out.txt, and we have to specify it for writing, okay? So once we do that, we're going to use the write method, okay? And keep in mind that uh, the argument for the write method must be type string, right? And also notice that if you want stuff on different lines, you may need to uh, write the new line character, right? So if you want stuff on different different lines, you're going to have to include that yourself. Uh, write doesn't do it automatically. So uh, let's create a couple variables here. So how about a equals hello? Oops, sorry, I have a. How about b equals hello? C equals 12. D equals 3.14159, because why not? All right, so let's go ahead and write that stuff to the file. So we're gonna say a.write, and we'll just do b, okay? And i um, gonna want a new line character, because I want hello on its own line. Okay, now I'm gonna write uh, world, string literal, okay? And then I'm going to write uh, c to the um, file, but remember, the argument has to be type string. So let's use the string conversion function and pass C to it. Okay. And then I will write the new line character. So that way the 12 ends up on its own line. Right. And then I'll do a similar thing for uh, variable D. Okay. All right. And then once we're done, Close the file. So a dot close. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Let's see what happens. Don't see any output. That's not surprising. I don't have any print uh, functions here. So let's go take a look at the contents of the file that was created. So let's file open. And on my desktop is where I have my files.py. And if we scroll down, we should see. Um, the name of the file that was created, which should be, what was it? It was uh, out.txt, right? All right, so where are you? Let's see here. We want to see text files. And what did I name it? Out.txt. So there's out.txt. Let's go ahead and open that. And do we have everything in the file that we meant to put in there? Hello, world 12, 3.414159. Yep, and everything's on a new line because we put new line characters after everything. Awesome. So, success. Okay, so the last thing we want to talk about is appending to a text file. Right, so when we're appending to a text file, we're preserving all the uh, data in a file. Right, so we're going to open an existing file. There's some data already in there. And what's going to happen is, is we're going to be putting the new data at the end. Right, so we're going to need to use the open function just like before. We're going to provide a file name just like before and uh, the argument A. 
And the argument A stands for append. Okay, so right position is going to be at the end of the file, existing contents preserved. We're going to use the right method as before, and then we're going to close when we're done. Okay, so let's look at an example. So what we'll do is uh, we'll open the file we just created, out.txt, and we'll add a couple lines to it. Close it, and then we'll go examine the contents of that file. Make sure everything's there like it should be. Okay, so first things first, open the file with the A argument. Stands for append. So I need that variable. I can name this whatever I want, just so we're not confused with the argument named A. I'll call this um, A file, okay? And we'll go ahead and open it. And the file we want it to append to was named out.txt and we're gonna open it for appending. Okay, then we'll use the right method, just like before. Okay, and we'll say a file, and we'll go ahead and write, um, you know, I don't know, foo, right? Write foo on its own line, and then uh, on the next line we'll write, um, spam okay and then eggs there we go right right three pieces of data uh, on the uh, or at the end of the file okay so let's go ahead and close the file so we'll use the close method just like before okay and then let's go ahead and run this okay now let's go examine the file Okay, out.txt, all right, and there we can see foo, spam, and eggs added to the already existing data. Didn't lose what was already there because we appended. We didn't just open it for writing. Key thing here, that argument right there. Okay, so this video is running a little bit long. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Um, I've done a couple of important things here that I'll reserve for future videos. One is what if the file fails to open, right? Just because you say open this file for reading or writing or appending doesn't mean that it's actually going to do that. So we need a mechanism for handling what happens if the files fail to open, right? So the examples I gave you, they work, but they're not robust, right? So you know, what if you try to open a file for reading that doesn't exist? Or what if you try to open a file for writing in a directory uh, that you don't have access or that you don't have right permissions for, right? That's going to fail. And so you can't then go ahead and interact or have your program interact with the file as if it had opened when it failed. That would be bad, right? So we'll talk about how to handle that in later videos. Uh, what about binary files? Binary files, we looked at just text files in this video and binary files have the advantage of being able to read in a whole bunch of stuff at one time rather than just say a line at a time. Uh, what about using the data in files for further processing, right? So I showed you how to how to read uh, data in. I showed you how to write data to the files. I didn't give you any examples of, you know, maybe like reading two numbers in and then um, adding them together. Um, you should be able to do that on your own, but maybe in a future video I'll give you an example of how that's uh, of how that's done. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so the, some of the things we need to cover in future videos, but um, that'll be all that we cover uh, for now. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.